Hello folks, and welcome back to another episode of Candor's Corner. Now, the other day, I was thinking about the videos that I had made for the Lexavon Tool Company. And it got me to thinking, what about the other tools that I already own and love? Well, today, I'm going to be sharing with you one of those tools that I've had for a while that has been an invaluable tool to me. It's a tool that many of you may already be familiar with. I am, in fact, talking about my multimeter. I apologize now if this video should be longer than usual, but this is something that is a little more complicated than, say, a torque wrench. With that in mind, well, let's move on, shall we? Now, a multimeter is one of those things that an entry-level hobbyist all the way up to the professional owns. It is, in fact, a tool that is a must-have if you do any type of electrical or electronics work. And even if you don't, they are still nice to have, even if you just want to check battery power or see if that electrical socket in your bedroom is still live after seeing the magic smoke coming pouring out of it. In the right hands, it can tell you a lot. And in the wrong hands, it becomes, if nothing else, a good paperweight or a conversational piece, depending on the model you choose. They can come in analog or digital versions, but I prefer the digital ones. Mine is from a company called South Wired Tools, model 14090T. And it has one feature that was the main reason I bought it. Bluetooth. But more on this later. But before I go over the features of this particular model, let me explain why I bought this one. And know now that this may be overkill for some of you, and perhaps myself included, but there are other models available with fewer features, but just as capable as this model. Now, I could have purchased a meter by the company Fluke. If you've never heard of this company before, let me just say that they are pretty much the standard that everyone strives to be like. They pretty much set the standard by which most meters strive to match, and as such, they are priced accordingly. In other words, you get what you pay for, and boy howdy can you pay. Now, I have nothing against Fluke. And in fact, there are several meters and test tools that they make that I would love to have. Like this $6,200 Fluke Scope slash Oscilloscope. And if for nothing else, other than that ooh-ah factor. But truth be told, I am not made of money. And would rather put food on my table than live on the street begging for change. So, instead... I had to find a more economical version, since the cheapest fluke I could find that had even close to the features I wanted, such as this Fluke 3000 wireless meter, cost around $300. And since this is a tool that I use quite often, I wanted something that not only fit my needs, but was reliable, and didn't force me to sell everything I own just to afford one. This is where the south wire meter comes in. Now, first off, don't let all the buttons and complicated dial functions scare you. They are, in fact, relatively straightforward to understand. And while I'm not going to go into detail of every little function, since it would take far too long to explain what they all are, especially to those of you who might have limited knowledge of certain functions, but I will try and show off the main features that I like and use the most. Now, the meter has several functions that I like, and some features that are nice to see, but not something that I use that often. But the meter does do basic functions, such, such as measuring amperage from microamps all the way up to 10 amps, AC and DC voltages, along with visual and audible continuity testing and diode checking. Now, these are what I would call the bare basic needed functions. But alongside those features, 
It also measures capacitance and has a temperature probe and can tell you the frequency of the electrical current as well as relative power and low Z function, which I won't get into detail since this is more than most people need. But I will put a link in the description below if you want to find out more on these later on your own. These are just features that only a few people actually use or need. So, let's just see how the basic functions work, shall we? And for this, I'm going to break out a set of my very nice, handy-dandy, and favorite little banana clip cables that I bought. Now these do not come with the meter. These are separate ones that I have purchased. But for the sake of this video, it's going to make things a little bit easier. So for the first thing that we're going to do is, I've already set my little bench power supply over here that I've made. And I've set it for about 10 volts at 5 amps. So let's just see how well this thing works, shall we? So let's decide that we're going to measure amperage. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to set the meter to read amperage. And just like that, it's set for setting to measure amperage. But it's set for AC. So we need to change the mode. Now it's set for DC because this is a DC power supply. So all we need to do is to take our positive lead, in which case we'll be green, place it over here into the 10 amp range, take our blue, which will become our ground, place it in the black, and now we can take our test leads and hook these up. And now, when I turn on my bench power supply, we should be reading 5 volts. Excuse me. 5 amps. And there we go. 5 amps. Exactly on the meter. Now, if I wanted to measure the voltage, I have my meter set for 10 volts. Again, DC. So all we need to do is to move this over to the voltage and set our meter to measure voltage. And once again, we need to change the mode from AC to DC. And just like that, we are reading 10 volts. Now you'll notice that it is not 100% perfect, but 9.99 is as good as I can get and in all honesty, it might actually be my power supply. And in fact, if you read it, my power supply is actually reading 9.99. The meter is extremely accurate. For the price range, I thought it was very good in performance. But what if we don't want to measure voltage? Let's say we need to measure, say, resistance. That's not a problem. All we need to do Here, I have a 330 ohm resistor. We just hook it up. And now, we set the meter to read resistance. And as you can see, 332.2. Now, no resistor other than specifically made ones are going to be perfect. They all have a tolerance of either plus or minus anywhere from plus or minus 5% to plus or minus 15%. This is a plus or minus 10%. In other words, this falls well within the range of 10% of 330, or 330 ohms. Now you want to check a diode. Well, 
that's easy enough to do. Set it for a diode. Now, a diode only measures or allows current to flow in one direction. As you can see, it's reading overload. Had that been a zero on the screen, that would have indicated a dead short. When we reverse these to the other side, you see we get a reading, which is telling me that this diode is conducting electricity in only one direction as it should, and it's a good diode. What about measuring the capacitance of a capacitor? Now again, this is not a function that is needed by most people, but it's still nice to have. This is an electrolytic capacitor. You can tell because it has a negative on here, and that basically denotes that it's telling you that this is polarity sensitive. So we place our positive lead here, and we place our, our negative lead here, and we wait for a moment until we get a reading. This can take a moment. 48.5. This is a 47 UF microfarad. At the top, we have UF symbols for the microfarad. And again, no capacitor is perfect other than very specifically highly engineered parts. This again falls within that range. Now, other nice features. Well, these include the ability to select between auto ranging and manually selecting the voltage range. Again, most people would prefer to use the auto ranging because they don't have to fool and automatically select what range that they want to uh, measure in. It also has a peak hold function for reading and keeping the highest peak value on the screen. And it also has a minimum, maximum, and average function when taking readings. The meter is equipped with a flashlight, which is right here, and can be turned on once, the, once we are in a powered on mode. More of a gimmicky thing, really, but hey, you know, you never know when you're going to need a flashlight. And as you've seen, it does have a blue backlit LCD screen for easier viewing. The carrying strap is equipped with a place to hang on a hook, if so needed. And it also has a magnetic mount. So if you wanted to hang this on, say, an electrical box or something, it keeps your hands free. It also has dedicated slots on the back so that you can take your probes and you can keep them and store them directly on the meter when it's in its carrying case. It has a fairly ruggedized body and it is compliant with IP67 water and dust resistance as long as you keep these little caps right here inserted. It's also rated for CAT3 and CAT4 applications. Basically three phase situations and utility power and conductors. But in order to be compliant you must keep the insulation tips attached to your probes. That is for your safety, so you do not kill yourself. But by far for me, the biggest feature is the Bluetooth. And unfortunately, I'm not able to show you this to you right now because I do not have a setup that is ready to go with Bluetooth. But suffice to say, once you've loaded the app onto your phone or your tablet, you can press the Bluetooth. You can pair this with your device 
and it becomes an instant logging device. Now, for me, I've always wanted one of these features because I like to test power supplies under load for periods of time and get a graph of the performance. And I get all of this for a price that's one half the cost of a fluke. Now, I've been using this meter for a while now with no issues whatsoever. And although it may not be as accurate as a well calibrated fluke, the accuracy is extremely good and more than good enough for me. It isn't really going to matter much if the readings are off slightly. I'm not working on mission critical components here. The reliability has been very good so far, and I can't see any reason why I shouldn't trust this meter. It's well designed and comes with two fuses installed on the back and behind the battery bay. This is the only downfall of the meter. The battery cover. Rather difficult to see, but there are four batter or four screws. There's one right here, there's one right here, there's one right there, and there's one right there. And while, again, the battery cover does seat nicely, I feel it's far too difficult to remove. And whatever you do, do not pull on this stand. It is not attached to the back of the battery bay. It may look like it, but it's not. Now, I'm not going to bash on this meter too much because of that one little flaw. The meter is definitely top-notch. And while I would love to show you all the features in use, it isn't practical. It would take far too long of a video to explain every little detail in use of this meter. For those of you that still feel that $150 is expensive, I hear you. I actually got mine on sale a while back and paid about $85. But have no fear as there are other models that they make that are just as capable with fewer bells and whistles and still provide a good meter value. And if you can find one, they do make a model 13090T that still has Bluetooth, if you so wanted that function. If not, you can find meters for around $50 that are just as nicely built as this one. Now, if you're like me and looking for a good multimeter, you'd be hard-pressed to find one as nice as this one in the price range. About the only thing I wish it did come with is a wider assortment of leads and probes. And I ended up having to buy a separate set that had a plethora of assorted leads. And keep in mind, though, that if you do decide to go this route, you might run into a problem where they don't work. And this is most likely caused by the plastic ends on the probes where they physically plug into the meter. The cheaper units are sometimes a bit too long and they prevent them from seating properly. And an easy fix is to just take a utility knife and cut back a short piece of the plastic and they should work just fine. And with that, I would like to thank you all for watching this video. And as always, please feel free to leave comments and suggestions below. And until next time, have a great day. And I hope to bring you all another video at some point. Goodbye, folks. This communication has ended.